Howdy, Rick from Dreamside Out. Well, here's step two of the band build. Okay, for me, step two is going to be to mount the solar panels because I've been carrying them around in my van uh, from, from the last van. These are my same solar panels I had on my first uh, Dreamside Out rig, <laughs> and, and um, <clears throat> they're still in perfect condition. And I want to get them out of the back and onto the roof where they belong, <clears throat> and just means I'm that much closer to having electricity in the van and also frees up space in here. I got, I'm starting to get jumped up in there. So uh, here we go. Okay, I laid out on the driveway the basic parts to the install. Um, you have the panels right there. And, and what I have is one, two, three, four brackets, a cover plate, and two L channels or you know, angle, uh, they're about, I think they're one and a quarter inch aluminum angles. Uh, just standard size, got them at Home Depot. Those span across the top of the van and they hook into these brackets. I'll show you how those brackets hook onto the van. It turns out that these brackets fit right into all of these box trucks. Well, it fit perfect on the on the U-Haul truck. It looks like it fits perfect on this uh, former budget rental truck, but fits right into the rail, which is an aluminum extrusion. And I made these brackets out of just one, two, three pieces of one and a half inch angle iron, and cut to, to length and welded together. And then I drilled some holes underneath there. And as you see here, there's a hole on the top to receive a, uh, a bolt. These will get fastened onto the extrusion here uh, with um, self-tapping screws and some glue, some construction adhesive. So I'm going to mount the panels more toward the front this time, so they're not right up against the back corner. Uh, so that's why I'm using um, these kinds of brackets. On my, on my other van, I had some other brackets on the very end here, um, which were special made. I, don't, uh, I can't use those this time because on this particular truck, the, the, the rail goes all the way around. On the U-Haul truck, this steel channel went clear to the roof, and so I had to have a slightly different kind of bracket there. Um, <clears throat> but I don't have that problem on this one. Plus, I'm keeping the panels more to the front because I have another plan for this section of the back. So the panels are going to move from about there to about there with space there for another two panels if I want it. So they're more to, toward the front this time. So I located the first screw, shot one in. Now I'm gonna put the other two in. I put uh, Loctite adhesive on there as well. So here's how the, the solar install came out. Let me, let me go over this with you. You know, I mounted these, these brackets on all four corners. Step two was to mount the forward rail here and I bolted it down. You can see there's a the bolt is under there. Now on my other van this bolt was out further and that's because the inside of this extrusion was out a little further. They have a different dimension for their extrusions on the U-Haul trucks than they do on this particular van. So that moved that moved the, the, the brackets a little closer and it made my my hole alignment off a little bit. 
but I made it work because I didn't want to just refabricate parts. I think riding up on that bolt isn't going to be a big deal because I, I put screws along the side and um, this, this angle piece carries the weight of the solar panels just fine. In the center, uh, the other thing I noticed difference about this truck is that the, the arch top is a little shallower than the U-Haul truck was. Uh, so the right down there in the center on the U-Haul truck, these rails were almost touching the roof. And I put a little piece of wood attached to this underneath there just for a spacer. In this case, I, I just that's just a piece of rubber pad that I folded up and taped onto there. So the weight of it is kind of holding it in there and, it, and the tape. And I don't think it's going to go anywhere. But it doesn't, it doesn't really need to be there. It just kind of is a dampener to, to keep this from kind of vibrating a little bit. This will hold the weight of these just fine. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, take, absorb some of the, the wobble in it. Here, I'll show you another thing. Okay, on this side too, again, I have the, the two brackets, but this is where the wires come through and I, I drape them over the edge and I put this protective cover over it just to, you know, take any, be the first point of abuse, if anything, if it scrapes along anywhere when I'm driving. But this worked for me perfect uh, on my last van build. I had to modify it, I had to cut these down a little bit because this dimension is a little narrower too. On this truck than it was on the u-haul truck but um it's working fine uh you know this is just a, a scrap piece of aluminum that i had laying around and i <laughs> i just uh it was easy to to cut to shape i made a little cardboard pattern first figured it out and then this is what i came up with so there you have it there's my solar panel mount um and it's a beautiful summer day, and it's uh, capturing energy as, as we speak. So here's my solar panel wires coming in. I just ran them behind those uh, ceiling uh, rafters or joists or uh, whatever you want to call these. The, and uh, then down here in the corner and right down to my entire electrical system which is right here and I got the door propped open to show you what it is and to talk about it a little bit well let's let's start with my batteries these are VMAX batteries they're made by VMAX um, they're, they're made especially for solar charging um, they're very heavy they're 90 pounds a piece you don't want to move them around a lot. Um, <clears throat> they're 155 amp hour AGM deep cycle batteries that are sealed batteries. You know, so they don't they don't off gas. Um, you know, I know that the argument about batteries off gassing. Any battery can off gas, even if it's a sealed b battery, because if you if you charge it too much or or too, and it starts to boil, it'll it'll burp out some gas but i'm not really too worried about it i, th I don't think it's a hazard uh, that's just the risk i'm taking on that one i have it in a sealed box uh, this this lid closed closes down i don't want to drill a hole out the bottom to vent it because i just don't want water coming in you know i want it to i want it to be sealed and uh, i have them hooked up in parallel so you know, 255 amp hour batteries hooked up in parallel. Um, <clears throat> and right here I have my, uh, well, I'll go through the components one at a time here. So coming in from the solar panels, the, the wires go right into this piece of equipment. It's a, it's a charge controller. It's a 40 amp uh, MPPT uh, maximum power point controller. Um, I got it through Renogy and it'll handle 
another set of panels just like I have on the roof. So I could add another set of panels to this and it would still handle them just fine. And what this does is it keeps the uh, batteries from overcharging and it also provides a very efficient charge from the solar panels. That maximum power point technology works really well. I've had this system has worked without a hiccup for two and a half years for me. It's been just a great set up. Now in addition to that I have another way to charge the batteries and that's with this piece of equipment here this IntelliPower converter or smart charger whatever you want to call it. It hooks up to a 30 amp outlet. I can hook up to shore power and as, you, as I'll show you here I have see this is your standard 30 amp outlet. It's got the, the three prongs, but this prong is perpendicular to this one so that you can't plug it into a 20 amp. However, I do plug it into 20 amp outlets all the time. I, I got an adapter and made a, an extension cord so I can plug this in. And now I can just plug it into somebody's garage, somebody's uh, um, outlet if I want. And it, it works fine. I've never had any problem running it on 20 amps. It seems to work just fine on 20 or 30 amps. And I called the manufacturer and asked them about it. And they said, yeah, it works fine. But they just designed it more for the, you know, the RV world where you go into campgrounds and hook up to 30 amp hookups. Um, anyway, it charges my batteries really well. <clears throat> that, in addition to my solar panel. So I have both of those hooked up to the battery. Here's my smart charger coming in and here's the solar panel wires hooked in. And in the back here on, on the top here I have another piece of equipment. This is a, a pure sine wave inverter 1500 watt by Go Power. It's a, it's, a, it's a really nice inverter. I paid some money for this. If you look them up they're about 400 bucks. They're not cheap. I know people can buy a, an inverter for a hundred bucks or something, but or even cheaper than that. But I spent some money on this one because I wanted a good one, and I did some re some uh, real in-depth research on on how they're built. These things I think are built really well. <clears throat> the internal parts is what you want to want to think about with an inverter. If you buy a cheap one, you know you get you get what you pay for. They work, but I just wanted this thing to work flawlessly, <clears throat> and I've put some loads on it. You know, I'll hook it up sometimes to to uh, to outlets. You know, I'll plug those those power strips into it, and I can run all kinds of stuff off these batteries uh, if I want to. Uh, so that it, and what it does, of course, it it, it converts your uh, DC current into AC current, so you have the same kind of a uh, performance that you would get out of a regular house, uh, a plug-in outlet in a, in a house. Uh, the other part of this electrical system that I didn't talk about yet was, uh, this is my distribution panel down here. So coming out of the back here is uh, that thick, those, the red and the yellow uh, wire come into here. It's fused off there, it goes into some some uh, a fuse block and some some power some uh, power blocks there, and I can run wiring off of there to different places. Uh, what I got right now, this I just had to clip these off when I got when I salvaged it out of my old van. Uh, these are the the wires that went to some lights that I had. I'm gonna I'm gonna hook up my lights uh, in the next day or so. So now my philosophy about electrical in a van, and this is just my opinion, I'm not trying to sound like a know-it-all here, because I'm still learning as I go, uh, but it seemed reasonable to me that a good electrical system is really dependent on the quality of the batteries you have. I mean, a lot of people think first about their solar panels and all the other stuff, and then sometimes they'll put a cheapo set of batteries on it and then wonder why it doesn't work well. Well, you got to have a good tank of energy that's reliable to run your stuff. 
The solar panels are just there to, to top it off all the time, to trickle charge it. But these are really the heart of my electrical system. And they are good batteries. And you will spend money to get good batteries. I mean, don't go cheap on batteries if you want a good electrical system. Uh, and and I, I think, too, that the fact that these are designed especially for solar charging and trickle charging, uh, they are the design of batteries is not all the same. You know, if you get uh, wet cell batteries or golf cart batteries or something like that, those are those are designed for different purposes. They're you know, the, these are designed uh, for a, to to take a, a certain kind of trickle charge from a solar panel and to and to uh, you know allow that energy to be available for a, for a kind of a general use of things. And, and that's why I went with them. And they're not cheap. I don't remember what I paid for them. I think they were about 300 bucks a piece or something. They're not cheap. And, but I think it was well worth it because they have worked flawlessly. And even, even when they sat for two weeks without being charged, the minute I hooked them up, there was still 13.1 volts on, on there. And once I hooked them up to the solar, right now you'll see my, my meter. I don't know if you can read that. It's, it's it's more it's the it's the the first cycle of charging in the morning so it's it's boosting up to 14.4 volts and and then it'll it'll settle back down to about like 13.7 volts so i could sit here right now if i if i wanted to with my laptop my coffee grinder a few other things on and the the solar charging would would keep up with with what i'm what i'm using uh, in the in the evening, however, when the sun goes down, I have several hours of of use out of this system. I've gone I've gone from sundown to one in the morning, and it, and my batteries only go down to about twelve point nine volts. I've never I've never really gone down below twelve eight volts twelve point eight. I I always you know turn off the system at that point and uh, just let them set till the next day. And in addition to the solar and the smart charger electrical components, I also have been carrying a generator with me. Right now it's in a storage room. I don't have it in the van. I'm debating on whether to keep that generator or not. You know, over two and a half years, I didn't even turn the thing on more than once or twice, and that was just for, you know, to keep it running. <laughs> It was really not a, I didn't, I found I didn't use it. I like knowing that I have it though. You know, if I was somewhere and I wanted to run some serious power tools or something, or if I wanted to get a little jam, a little uh, air conditioner to go in my van or something, you know, I, I suppose you'd need a generator for that kind of an of application. But I, I found I, I was just hauling it around and never used it, so I'm not. I have still thinking about whether I want to keep it because it takes up space. You know, I hear the debates on everybody got opinions on what kind of solar charging setup to have. Uh, this one has worked well for me. I live in the Pacific Northwest. We have lots of gray days when, you know, you wouldn't think you'd get any solar energy coming in, but I do. My batteries top off just fine with those 150 watt monocrystalline panels, the uh, maximum power point charge controller, and the, the really good Husky Sirius batteries that I have. I really haven't lost a day of charging and topping off my batteries in a couple of years of having this system. It's robust, you know, and I, I, I thought in the beginning that what you need is a good set of batteries. So I, I put my focus on that first. I didn't even know when I bought the batteries, I wasn't sure if I was even going to put solar on it. You know, I was thinking at the time, maybe all I need is a generator or a smart charger or a, uh, one of those solenoids that you hook up to your, uh, to your alternator when you're driving. Um, maybe that's all I needed. That's what I was thinking at the time. Solar kind of was an afterthought. But I think batteries are the biggest thing to think about in your, in your setup. I don't, don't go cheap on batteries. Get some good ones. Yeah, I know they're, they're expensive, but if you want power that's going to last you, you're even going to be swapping out crappy batteries all the time and paying for those.
or get some good ones that are low maintenance and can really give you the mileage you need. Uh, it's worth it, it really is worth it.